Hey guys, today I'm going to share with you five things you may not know about your Mavic Mini. Now, if the Mavic Mini is new to you, and especially if you're new to drone flying, I'm hoping that you're going to learn at least one new thing about this amazing little drone. But anyhow, let's get going. The normal tilt range for the Mini's gimbal is from zero degrees, which is straight forward, to minus 90 degrees, which is straight down. But did you know you can get the gimbal to point upwards too? If you go into System Settings, Control, Gimbal, click on Advanced, and turn on Allow Upward Gimbal Rotation, you'll be able to move the gimbal to point up by 20 degrees. That's pretty cool. There's also an option to recenter the gimbal too if you go back one menu. Touching the recenter gimbal option the first time points it straight down, and touching it again will bring it back to zero degrees, which is straight forward. The new intelligent flight batteries for the Mavic Mini have no LED indicator lights to let you know how much charge is remaining. So how do you find out how much charge you have on a battery? Well, there's two simple ways to do that. With the battery installed in your Mini, just give the power button a quick press and the LEDs will light up indicating how much charge is remaining. If you have the two-way charging hub, you can just insert the battery into the hub and it will quickly flash the charge level of all batteries in the hub. If batteries are already in the hub, just quick press the function button on the side to see the power levels. Now the not so great thing about the two-way charging hub is it charges the batteries in series, not parallel. So only one battery charges at a time. If you have three fully depleted batteries in the hub, it's going to take you four and a half hours to bring them all up to a full charge. And one last thing, while the Mini's in flight, if you tap on the battery indicator in the top right corner of the screen, you're going to get additional battery information such as temperature, voltage, and flight time. There are some simple joystick movements on the Mini's remote controller that allow you to start the motors, stop them, take off, and even land without interacting with the DJI Fly app. By pushing both joysticks to the bottom inner or outer corners, you can start or stop the motors. This is called the Combination Stick Command, or CSC. Once the motors have started or stopped spinning, you can release the sticks. With the motor spinning, just push up on the left joystick and the Mini will lift off. Release the left joystick and the Mini will just hover in place as usual. And then just pull down on the left joystick, like give it, give it your hand oh, as you a... Don't have to press. You don't have to press that. Give your hand as a target before you do that. Well, but how do I do that then? To land, just pull down on the left joystick and hold it down. Now, the Mini's gonna come in really quickly at first until it senses proximity to the ground or a suitable landing target. Once it does that, it's gonna begin the landing procedure and slow down. Just keep holding that left joystick down until it touches down and the motor stops spinning. One of the most useful buttons on the DJI Sparks remote controller was pause. It's just a super handy feature that would interrupt flight and get you out of potentially sticky situations. Well, with the Mini's remote controller, that dedicated button is now gone. But wait, don't despair. On the Mini's remote, the return to home button also acts as flight pause. A short press of this button will interrupt a return to home, auto landing, quick shots, and even override a full throttle joystick position, leaving your Mini stopped and hovering in place. Currently, the Mavic Mini does not support manual camera settings while shooting video. If you're in video mode and you tap the camera mode switch at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you're going to get an error. All you're able to do right now with video mode is set the exposure compensation or exposure lock. But if you switch to photo mode, that changes. Tapping the camera mode switch on the bottom right hand corner of the screen alternates you between auto and manual exposure modes. While in manual mode, you can adjust the shutter speed in ISO. The value under MM shows you the difference between what you have chosen as an exposure and what the Mini thinks the correct exposure should be. Also, in photo shooting mode and auto exposure, if you touch the screen, you can have the Mini set exposure from that spot rather than evaluating the whole scene. This could be kind of handy in difficult lighting situations when you want to make sure that your subject is properly exposed. And one final tip, if you go into system settings, camera, advanced settings, there's an option for overexposure warning. If you turn that on, areas of your image showing black and white zebra stripes indicate overexposure, and that can be really helpful for dialing in correct exposure. The Mavic Mini's 249 gram takeoff weight is not a coincidence. In many countries around the world, a sub 250 gram drone is exempt from certain regulations. The Mavic Mini's takeoff weight with a battery and an SD card installed actually comes in below 249 grams. So that leads you a bit of wiggle room to potentially add an ND filter or a skin. 
And one final point, if you're gonna be adding the prop guards to your mini, you're no longer a sub 250 gram drone. So plan accordingly if you're gonna be flying with these things outdoors. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you learned at least one new thing about your Mavic Mini. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, you guessed it. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.